Bree and I attracted a lot of attention. We looked different, we smelled different, we sounded different, we, everything about us was different. Um, and the kids would kind of go, oh, there'd be all these touchy games and ring around games. But when the books were laid out, it was very moving to see. We fell away. We were not important anymore, which enabled us to take photographs and video that I have up on my website and the Camel Book Drive website. The, all that they cared about were the books. And they opened them up and they began sharing things with one another, pictures, and they, some of them would, and you can see this in the video too, mouth the words. And, you know, it, it was really more moving than I can say, more than I expected. This was one of the surprises of the trip, I think, because, I don't know, as an author here, um, one of the things you're often told is there are so many books published every year, and, you know, yours is just another one, and, you know, people are really not reading much anyway, and maybe your mother will buy it, and maybe she'll buy an extra copy for your aunt, I don't know. <laughs> it's really like your, your expectations are, are low. And so to see, and this is an area where this was the third year of drought and famine, on top of chronic poverty. So Bree and I were bringing with us maize and cooking oil uh, where we went. But I mean, to call it a drop in the bucket would be to make more of it than it was. It was a small offering. Um, and we would give that to the older people because there was a generational gap here in, in how the Camel Library was viewed. And we would give it to the older people. Um, but despite this, the, these kinds of conditions, what the kids cared about were the books. And the books were, are, performing a remarkable role here. This is an area where you used to believe, the kids used to believe that everybody in the world raised goats and cows and camel and traveled three or four times a year in search of more water. That's all they knew until so they couldn't really imagine anything else. So those books for them are doing some of what they do for us. They allow us to live other lives, right? We get to, I get to move out of my one little life and live many other lives in a far more intimate and meaningful way than I'd be able to without those books. Um, and then they're also allowing people to um, study, learn uh, skills, and actually take entrance exams uh, to continue their studies in Nairobi and to do things with their life that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. Um, and they go out four days a week, three hours, two, three hours in, two, three hours out. I mean, they're truly, absolutely inspirational. Um, so before I go on, I just, is there any questions I'd like to ask, take a